everybody, Mrs. Gill here, and today we're going to be reading Lilla and the Crow by Gabrielle Grimmerd. Lilla and the Crow by Gabrielle Grimmerd. Lilla has just moved to a new city. Every day she goes outside, sits on a sidewalk, and scratches at the dirt with her stick. A crow calls from across the road. She traps bugs in a jar, then lets them go. She plays hopscotch on an empty road. Lilla wishes she had a friend. But this morning she gets up early, dresses, and leaves the house. With the wind in her hair and a smile on her face, she seems to be flying on the way to school. Her heart is as light as a feather. She imagines herself surrounded by new friends. The teacher, Mr. Nicholas, introduces Leela. She sees her classmates look at her and can't wait to get to know them. Squirming at her desk, Leela taps her foot impatiently. Finally, it's recess and the children head out to play. Now is Leela's chance to make a friend. But suddenly, a voice rises above the others. Nathan, the leader of the pack, shouts, A crow! A crow! The new girl's hair is like a crow! The others stare at Lilla. Some whisper to their friends, then turn away. Lilla stands alone, holding her ball. On the way home, Lilla's heart is as heavy as a stone. A crow perches on the branch of an old oak tree, its feathers as black as Lilla's hair. It caws and croaks as if it wants to tell her something, but Lilla just walks away. The next day, Lilla wears a knitted cap to hide her hair. But as soon as Nathan sees her, he cries out, A crow! A crow! The new girl's skin is dark like a crow. The others giggle and point. Lilla's heart grows as heavy as two stones. She drops her head and slowly walks away. As Lilla heads home after a long, lonely day, the crow watches. Lilla looks up but keeps walking. The crow spreads its wings and glides along behind her. Lilla spins around. Leave me alone, she yells. She doesn't want company, not even a bird. The third day, Lilla goes to school wearing her cap and a sweater with very high neck that, that she pulls over her chin. Nathan peers at her for a moment, then he shouts, a crow! A crow! The new girl's eyes are dark like a crow. A few others laugh quietly at first, then one join in and the laughter gets louder. Lilla's heart grows as heavy as three stones. She sits at the edge of the playground until recess ends. After school, Lilla kicks at everything in sight dead branches and leaves and stones lying around on the ground. The crow is watching her again. This time it lands on the path and hops towards her. Lilla picks up the stone as she hurls it at the bird and it flies away. Every day now, Lilla hides under a cap inside her sweater behind dark glasses. She plays alone at recess and sits by herself at lunch. After school, she runs home as quickly as she can. Weeks go by. The autumn festival will soon be here. The children chatter excitedly about the costumes they're going to wear, all except Lilla, who dreams of having an invisibly invisible cloak so she can disappear forever. It's the day before the great festival. The classroom is decorated and the children can't wait to show off their costumes. Lilla feels lonelier than ever. Her heart is as heavy as a mountain of stones. Running home from school as fast as she can, Lilla trips. As she crashes to the ground, her heavy heart crumbles. 
a crow lands near her. Between her sobs, Lilla lifts her head and for the first time really looks at the bird. She's surprised to see how beautiful its black feathers are, highlighted with purple. There's a softness in the eyes of the creature watching her, and Lilla has a strange feeling they have known each other for a long time. She takes a deep, shaky breath and wipes away her tears. The crow comes closer to Lilla and seems to whisper in her ear. Her heart lightens. She gets up and hopping from one foot and then the other, follows the bird, which flutters ahead of her into the woods. The bird stops in a clearing. There, under the canopy of trees, hundreds of crows spread their great wings, circle the girl's body as she stands in wonder. When at last they fly away, a shower of black feathers settles at her feet. Lilla has an idea. She gathers a mountain of feathers, stuffs them in her backpack, and hurries home. When the sun rises, Lilla is ready. A flock of colorful little creatures heads towards the school. Then Lilla makes her entrance dark and majestic. She is magnificent. A crow, a crow, Lilla is a crow, the children exclaim. Only Nathan is speech speechless. The children crowd around her. Lilla touches her soft feathers. At that moment, her heart soars. Lilla is still called Crow, but she doesn't mind. Now there is something different about Mr. Nicholas's class. Lilla and the Crown by Gabrielle Grimmerk.